This is just my best setup. Oh, oh we are live on Facebook. Kia ora koutou, everybody who's early birds and joining us straight away. We've had a few people register, and so we're going to let people come in at your leisure. And if all of you joining us right now are here for the Green Party's amazing webinar about our kick-ass policy, Hoki Whenua Mai, you have come to the right place. Feel free to introduce yourself in the chat uh, and we you're Zooming in from or live streaming, watching this on your phone somewhere in this country, maybe in the world. Let us, let us know where you're coming in from. We haven't even started yet, but there is a Q&A thingy there if you have any questions kia ora Celia coming in to us from the weighted upper oh kia ora Nate coming in a young environmentalist coming in from Nelson ah Suzanne from beautiful Otipoti Dunedin where we grew up ah uh, motu kairangi kia ora Susanna Oh, Emma from Ototahi. Oh, this is lovely. <laughs> the place to catch. Oh, no. Okay. Names are going too fast. I invite everyone to go in the chat and read them. <laughs> Marin from Arendale. No, too fast. Too fast. I cannot even read them <laughs> quick enough as they're spinning through. Awesome. And kia ora, Rosalie from Ototahi. A hardworking outreach person there. Welcome to everybody arriving from all over the country. It's turning out. Please feel free to introduce yourself where you're coming in from in the chat. We've got quite a few people registered for this, so we're going to give it a couple more minutes uh, to let everybody come in. <laughs> Kia ora, Danny, <laughs> from the mighty Kiri Kiri Roa. Oh, okay, Suzanne's chatting to you now, Jen. Now, just so you know, Suzanne, that everyone has seen that. Oh, Kylie from Fitianga, Kia ora. <laughs> Vanessa from Wellington, welcome. <laughs> no my heart on my everybody. I'm very excited about this. You know how when you call it, have a party or you have an event and then you get really worried, are people going to come? And then people start registering, you think, are they still actually going to make it on the night? Very excited to see you all coming in here tonight. Kia ora, Russell and Marie. Let's see, from Tonga Porutu. Where is that? Sorry, Aroha mai. I need more details on this. <laughs> and if one of my colleagues knows, uh, kia ora, Ropata. This is our Kaifakahari of Te Rohu Ponamu, our uh, <laughs> our uh, Kaifakahaere is the one of our co-leaders of the uh, Māori Network in the Greens. Kia ora, Nicola. Uh, thank you, Russell. North Taranaki, South King Country. All right. Oh. I love it. We've already got a question in the question and answers. So we're going to come back to you. Pua from Tamaki Makoto. Kia ora. Welcome. Thank you, Clark. This is a lesson for everyone who doesn't know about places in our oh. Ngaiwi Whakaka from Flaxmere. This is a lovely place. I've spent a bit of time down there when I've been moving across the Rohe and around Te Re Taunga. Okay. Feel like the numbers are settling. It's five past. I said that and then a whole lot more people came on. So 
I'm going to give this one more minute. Make sure you've got your cups of tea, other beverages. It is later. It is time on a Thursday night. Ah, Ruby is a youth MP from Te Atatū, Auckland. Oh, welcome. Ah, I think. Meti mata. <laughs> Uh, no mai hara mai kia koutou katoa ko tau mai nei te nei wā ki te korero ki te fakarongo i te nei kaupapa e pāna ki a mātou. Te iwi Māori me ngā iwi katoa o Aotearoa. Uh, he e karakia uh, kia, kia tau te Māori. Uh, whakataka te hau ki te uru, whakataka te hau ki te tonga. Kia mā kina kina ki uta, kia mā tara tara ki tai. E hi ake ana te atakura, he tio, he huka, he hauhu, tihei mauri ora. And no, Vanessa, we cannot hear you eating your tea. That's why everyone needs to be on mute. <laughs> so. Oh, how lovely. I loving the, I'm loving the comments. And... Of course, it's really important to start with karakia. It helps bring us into the space. It lets go of whatever happened in your day. Uh, might have been great. It might have been not so flash. But we're in this space together to talk about something that's really centered. Uh, it's just become more and more apparent to us uh, that we need to not only just talk about, not argue about, not strongly advocate for, but come up with some concrete ideas about how we can move forward. So we're going to talk to you a little bit about what those are, but also we really want to hear from you. We really want the bulk of this time to be questions and uh, see what you're thinking about it. If you've had a chance to read it, but it doesn't matter if you haven't. We are not going to test you on this. And so to start our next session, I just want to to give share a whakatauki that was written by our co-leader, Marama Davidson, e mati o ranga o te taiao, ka ora ai te iwi. The well-being of the environment will always sustain the people, and we cannot control the well-being of taiao and sustain our people if we do not have control over our whenua. So, we're going to introduce ourselves. We are te mātawaka. We are the Māori Pacifica and Te Tiriti MPs of the Green Caucus and uh, ko Elizabeth Kerekere tōku ingoa, uh, ko au te kaiwhakahaere, te <laughs> kaihautu o, o te mātāwaka, uh, he moku punai o te tai rāwhati ki te taha o tōku pāpa, ko whanau ākai, ko ngati oni oni, ko te aitanga mahaki, ko rongo whakāta me ngai tāmanu hiri o kūnei iwi. Uh, ki te taha o tōku mama, no airangi, ko uh, no County Clare, Met County Tipperary. Uh, I'm going to pass over to our co-leader to, oh, okay, so I'm the chair of Te Mātāwaka. Uh, my portfolios include Māori development, health, uh, rainbow and takatāpui, arts, culture and heritage, Fano order, and statistics, uh, community and voluntary organisations. So I'm going to pass over to Marama and then we'll come to Jan. Uh, tēnā koe, uh, i te tiamana o te mātāwaka, Dr Elizabeth Kirikiri, tēnā koutou katoa, te mihi tēnei mokupuna o te pai tukirau o te rarawa ngā tuhi me te pai rāki te hoki ngā ngā te korau uh, in te kauana kia pautau. Um, kia ora, uh, Marama Davidson, co-leader of the Green Party and privileged to help our Mātāwaka MPs to push this out and leave this out. And um, here, in, here in Pōneke, here in Wellington and my, in my parliament office at the moment, but live in Manurewa in South Auckland and have done so for decades. Um, really, this is our first webinar since we launched um, on Monday and really, really pleased to have this discussion tonight. Phil Dalla with us.
Yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> okay, me. Uh, no Scotland, no Ireland, or Kutipuna, a e tipu aki o ki murihiku, and e ho ana o ki porirua, and e hiana kina tohu on he or nati toa ragatira, and e no hune o. Ko Jan Logi tokuinga, and I'm the Green Party's Tangata Tiriti, Titiriti spokesperson, amongst other um, roles within the party. and super stoked uh, to get to be part of Te Matawaka and this kind of new political force mm -hmm. that um, we're feeling within Parliament um, for Te Tiriti Justice. Kia ora. The other member of our um, Te Matawaka is Te Ano Tui Ono and he's listening in but he's on a train and so as soon as he lands which is estimated to be nine minutes uh then he'll be able to join us so he can introduce himself then and talk a little bit so this plan it came out of the work that when we when we formed as Tematawaka last year we thought about what did we want to see as our Māori priorities and we came up with six of them and so it was an independent Māori health authority sorted that out uh, we wanted absolutely to give life to Mātike Mai, and of course He Pua Pua is, that is the extension of that. Uh, we wanted to see progress on uh, the rights of takatāpui and, and issues that are facing Māori with diverse genders, sexualities and sex characteristics. We also wanted to, uh, we wanted to make sure that in all the work that we did, is that we were led by Fano Hapu and Iwi. It's one of the core uh, tenets of the Green Party is that we are uh, we believe in appropriate decision making. The decision is made by those most affected, and when it's Kopapa Māori, then it has to be uh, Tangata Finua. The for me, what are the other ones? <laughs> Somebody jump in on the rest of them. But what we wanted to see was make sure that we listened to the people on the ground because a lot of the time that is our whanau, our hapu and our iwi uh, but also the Māori, Māori organisations who are living, people who have decided to make their life in the rohe of another iwi and so that is, that is how we have led our work. So we made a commitment last year and we were the only party that did this to travel around the country and meet with the leaders and to sit with, and several of them we went back and forward to uh, for the, who are doing the land occupations. And we listened to the stories and we just heard the similar threads that would go right through them, the same kind of law that constrained them from having that kaitiakitanga, having the, just the authority over their own lands. And was relationships with councils, it was relationships with developers, and all of those things, the common threads, and we could listen to all of these and thought, what it is, what is the thing that we could do? What are some practical things that we could make happen, as well as what is the vision that we really, really care about, which is that of the 5% only that's in Māori hands of this whenua, how do we move that figure up significantly and dramatically? because it's pretty shameful that after 50, over 50 years of the Waitangi Tribunal and the settlements coming to an end, that we still have not significantly increased the amount of land in Māori hands. And so that is where we got to this. And so I'm gonna pass over to Marama. And despite the fact she's had to talk quite a lot about this this week, I'm going to let her give a summary about what it is we're about. Kia ora, Elizabeth. It has been one of the deepest honours, actually, to have had an opportunity to, um, as co-leader, to talk about this and to share um, this corridor and this kōpapa at, at any opportunity that I have the privilege of. And I wanted to start and follow on from Elizabeth talking about, you know, this working on my kōpapa and policy for the Greens is off the back of a long commitment mm. on the Green Party to Te Tiriti and to Te Tiriti specifically. And I honour 
the incredible um, Tangata Tiriti and Māori Tangata Whenua in the Green Party, who had to do quite a bit of push and challenge and work to get that cemented as a core foundational um, value for the Green Party. And I want to acknowledge that we absolutely, as a political party, must continue to put on the political agenda and get attention on the very Māori um, aspirations, the very Māori collective goals that we have always had, um, while at the same time, every organisation needs to reflect and review itself and how it is doing in being a truly tiriti led organisation. We are not a Māori party. We are privileged to have kaupapa that strongly aligns with kaupapa Māori aspirations. Every organisation, um, tauwewe, uh, Māori needs to, needs to review and reflect and that work is ongoing with the Green Party and particularly want to acknowledge Elizabeth Tamata Waka um, and Te Roku Kaunanu, our Māori network, for leading a, a very big piece of work on that right this minute. It's important that we are not just putting the policies out there in public, that we are also doing our backyard work as well. And that's a challenge for everyone. Um, so I wanted to start there and also pick up, Elizabeth talked about you know, this is not just something that the Greens are overnight, we're going to support land back. For, for, for decades, we have um, wanted to be really consistent in te mana i te tiriti, and upholding the justice of te tiriti, and very specifically, the articles and tino ranga tiratanga and mana moti hapu, and particularly for hapu. Um, we know that the current processes of tiriti settlements and claims um, we've had a long-standing um, advocacy that we are opposed to full and final settlements, we are opposed to large natural groupings, we know that the process has continued to create tiriti breaches, has undermined the mana of hapu, has caused division among our own and when we visited, uh, when we have been a part of and been on the ground with occupations around Aotearoa, um, and those have included Ipimata, of course, in fact, it was the Green Party who led the political charge alongside the people on the ground to help be a political representation at that funeral. Shelly Bay, Bay Maru Kaikuru, Putiki Bay, Mahia Peninsula, Peninsula with Rocket Lab, Pukeapa, Pran, Narawahia, um, and so on. We, amongst us, have been on the ground, have listened, and understand that often the system um, is always so oppressive that it divides our own among ourselves because we are fighting for the crumbs left of our whenua. The little bit that we've got left, we are having to fight over it even among ourselves. So I think what I wanted to just make sure and acknowledge is that um, there are, we are how Māori communities have been held hostage into trying to build back our economic base in any way we can. And that often has differing points of view among Māori for what needs to happen to what little bit land we've got left. That is, that's heitakai, you know, that's for us to work out um, that we still need to give whenua, back to tangata whenua, for tangata whenua to do with it what they please. And I think that's just a, an important distinction. And I realize the difficulty in making those decisions. Um, I wanted to say that our long record and history of the Greens um, standing with collective Māori aspirations for future generations and mokokuna um, for justice, um, for economic, environmental, social and cultural justice is a really important part of Te Mātāwaka, is, is essential to all of our priorities. And like Elizabeth, um, some of that feedback, of course we've had a resounding feedback on a policy which picks up on a global and generations of commitment, lifelong commitment from people who have been working hard for land back for a long, 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 long time. And we simply, as the Green Party, have a political role and responsibility 
to put the action policies on the table. And I'm so proud that we have picked up one of the single most um, aspirations of iwi, and oh, sorry, of Māori and tangata whenua, which is to get our land back. And we've gone, yep, here's some ways for how we can do that. And the feedback, of course, from Māori has been resounding um, positive. But we've also had feedback from Tauriri, from Pākehā and non-Māori, who for a long time now are coming to um, realisation about the privilege of stolen land, confiscated land and colonisation that they have benefited from and are wanting to look at ways of giving land back is the, you know, the register idea that we've got in our solutions where people can register lands for right of first refusal, for example. So many people are keen for that. Pākehā have, are writing to us saying, yes, we want to be part of the solution. So, sorry, I've already been going on for far too long, um, but I, so I'm going to now pass over to Jan to pick up on, on a lot of the other things that I haven't, that we haven't covered together. And a couple, a couple more, I think, perhaps, as we also wait for um, Tiano to join us, is it's not just a physical transfer of physical whenua. Wuki whenua mai is about so much more than just physical whenua, as we know. And it's about connection. It's about decolonization and re indigenization It's about constitutional transformation that Matike Mai and Te Puapua talk about. It's about the beginning of authentic sharing of power and an honest relationship in te tiriti, as opposed to a partnership that focus on watered down principles. So land back is just one part of that work, but a significant part of that work. Kia ora. Um, so as our te tiriti spokesperson, I speak on quite a few of the settlement bills in parliament and um you know like i for a long time and originally from my work of working in women's refuge recognize that if we're wanting to create a society where we can all thrive um that is where it's safe to be who we are then we need to look at abuses of power in doing that work and the foundational abuse of power in this country has been colonization and um and that has been you know just like you can't you know it's uh, minimizing it to say the harm of the, the crown is perpetrated <laughs> has been profound um and is still profound ongoing harm um, by our crown. And so for me, as um, Tangata Treaty, it's part of my vision of creating a safe world for myself to live in, is I need to take responsibility for actually doing what I can, which is consistent with the Greens position, to get a crown to actually finally honour Te Tiriti or Waitangi, because that creates a safer society for all of us. Um, as well as, you know, justice, those small concepts. Um, and it's really frustrating, to be honest. I find speaking on the settlement bills a very, very strange thing to do, to be perfectly honest. Parliament's all united um, on pretty much every single bill in support of them. And you hear voices from pretty much every party saying, oh, we acknowledge that this is can never compensate for the loss. Ignoring the fact that that's an active decision mm -hmm. by the Crown to not compensate for the loss. And to every time where we have um, negotiators and hapu and iwi in the gallery in Parliament before COVID, who have been negotiating with the crown for decades where people have died mm -hmm. while these settlement bills have been negotiated, where close relationships have been torn apart because of the crown's position in that negotiation. 
and the fact that we know nobody involved from the mana whenua sides of those negotiations is happy with them but they make the commitment to them to be able to move on for future generations and the acknowledgement that they are not holding the power that the crown still holds all the power and in the way i think ella henry Mari TV on the weekend was, you know, described, it resonated with me is, you know, the reality of this is the thief who is setting the rules mm. and deciding how much to return. It's a deeply problematic process. And it's what we've seen through this is from the settlements from 1985 to 2020, the Crown has paid out $2.9 billion in total over that entire period of time. And we need to put that in the context of in 2020 in wage subsidy, the Crown paid out over $12 billion. South Canterbury Finance, I can't remember the figure. One finance company, how much Marama? 1.6 million. 1.6 billion to one company. Billion. Sure, they're shareholders. You know? A few shareholders. <laughs> because the concept of people taking a loss from that was too great a political risk for the Crown to take. And yet, the consequence of dispossession, which Māori are living with on a daily basis, is of no consequence. The, Estimate is that the Crown has paid out about 1% mm. of the value of what has been taken. I've spoken on bills where what was returned uh, to the negotiators, and it was in an area that's super fancy and houses are really expensive, they would have been able to buy, I worked it out as about three houses on their area out of that settlement. Because, you know, Pahia, <laughs> wealthy Pahia own that property and have been making massive capital gains on those mm. properties. And it's put it even further out of reach of mana whenua. And their, that reality was just is no part of the settlement process. It's just deeply flawed and is accepted as if this is the best we can do. And the Greens, and one of the reasons I'm in the Greens is that actually we're pretty clear this is not the best we can do. <laughs> and there is no way we should be saying this is full and final. And that tetility is not a tick box, negotiate, reach, you know, a final conclusion kind of deal. It's a relationship that needs to be ongoing. And, you know, you can't just say to your partner, oh, I did all the dishes last night. You've been telling me to do them forever. I've done them. That's it. Now I never have to do them again. Like, <laughs> you'd be, I don't think the relationship would last very long. And that's, we need to bring it back to actually connecting and recognizing how deeply central the land is to this. And that is one of the other things that strikes me as speaking on these bills is like how often the stories of um, like land loss, people moving away from their ancestral land, losing their connection to their own whanau and their own identity and how core that is to so many of our social problems. And tied up with that is almost always the desecration and the pollution of the land and the water under our beautiful Pahia um, conservation processes <laughs> or business as usual. You know, like that has just needs to be fixed. And this um, proposals that we've put up here are not our sense of this is all that can be done. Mm. These are us putting up some solutions that we believe will make a difference. And, and we're really interested in hearing people's 
ideas for what else we might want to do. We've already been hearing some of those, which are really exciting. So I'm not going to spend too much time on that. I'm just I'm telling you what we're doing, but I will just list some of the headlines on it and we can get into more detail. So an inquiry into the dispossession of Māori land, actually working out the extent of it and the impact of it so that we can have a proper understanding to inform those um, negotiations and a revisiting of the adequacy of the settlements because it's not enough to stand up in the house and say hey you know this doesn't compensate you for what the harm that's been done but hey this is the best we can do we can do better and providing for the crown to provide additional redress, particularly to hapu, whanau and Māori collectives and recognising the damage of that large natural process, um, now large natural groupings process. And we're hearing um, just an increasing concern coming from the Waitangi Tribunal in recent times, and that needs to be noted, around um, a sense that the crown is pushing for settlements in a, in a sense that's actually creating divisions increasingly um, between hapu. And that is not justice and that is not relationship and that is damaging. And again, it is Māori that picks up the pieces of that, not the Crown. Um, and to enable the return of whenua that is not owned by the Crown and that there's several mechanisms for doing that, enabling that private land to get back to the original ones. Kia ora, that was fantastic. And can I just say, I'm very much appreciating all of the people online here who have run away with this metaphor. So I uh, just want to shout out to Kay Jones. Kia ora, uh, that if te tiriti o Waitangi is like a marriage agreement, as some people say, it's a lifelong relationship and agreement, whereas Naomi is saying, just get your own dishwasher. <laughs> and, money and, to buy one, thanks. Yeah, yeah, hello. Uh, so thank you, everybody. I love it that we are going to get a copy of the chat as well because there's lots of amazing ideas in here. Now, I did see uh, Tiano's name pop back on our screen. It's gone again. We, what's going to happen is we're going to leave all the hardest questions for him and we're going to roll straight into this. Uh, and I'm going to uh, do the question and unless I feel particularly inspired that I want to answer it, I'm going to offer it out there uh, to you, between the two of you. So whoever gets in first, do the panellists think an, oh, we missed an opportunity when Judith asked to have a conversation about her pua pua because not to talk is more concerning. Mm. Who wants I, it's a great pathway. Thank you. And I'm, I'm really keen to have a go. I bet you do too, Jen. Um, we don't need Judah Collins or Pākehā who are ignorant of fertility justice to dictate how and when and what methods we use to discuss here pōpua. Uh, we certainly do not want um, people with racist political desires who are wanting, her aim is to whip up racism, not to genuinely have a conversation. Now, we ourselves, absolutely, and if we just look at Matike Mai, those are the conversations that have were being held around the country over, over many, many, many years. And those are the conversations that absolutely must be continued. And refusing to engage on Judith Collins' terms absolutely does not miss us an opportunity. Um, the Greens doing what we've just done, again, has opened up an opportunity from a ticker platform, though, from a value-based platform that is constructive and is about resolving and uh, uh, long-standing breaches and is about justice. Um, I, you know, obviously cut through is cut through, but we don't want to add oxygen to those damaging platforms and toxic narratives. And so that's why it's important for the Green Party with our privilege of platform to open up these opportunities for discussion the way that we have done pass it over to either of my colleagues. I'd just say on that too, that, and I completely agree with Marama, because how we talk about it does matter. Like mm -hmm. people can go either way on an issue, depending how you talk about it, particularly if they don't have a long history of understanding things. So 
to let her, with her really toxic view of the world that she was presenting at the time, um, lead that discussion, oh, I think would have been really uncomfortable and may not have led to the result that we wanted. But I also just want to acknowledge that, um, you know, the, the conversation that's at the heart of He Pōpua, like Māori have been calling for that conversation mm. well, well before Judith Collins stood up and called for it. And, and I do, I remember the first Iwi Leaders Forum that I went to um, maybe four years ago. And uh, at the Iwi Leaders Forum, they were wanting a conversation and for the government to do work on constitutional change. And the government said, um, you know, actually our priority is not that and that they really weren't wanting to have that public conversation. We've always been, like that was part of what we took to the election, is wanting this conversation and for it to be happening at our community levels and to be led by people who are grounded in the work. Um, and I think that's an opportunity that we keep on need to keep on coming in behind because Māori have been offering that and it's been shut down by the Crown so far. Kia ora, thank you. And another one from Haimana. What actions do the panel believe we as individuals can make in order to promote that co the conversation and discussion on hoki whenua mai? So this yeah. is absolutely what tonight is the start of. Marama? No, oh, I was going to leave, leave it for you, Elizabeth. But oh. it actually flows on perfectly from the from that very first question you posed as well, which is, you know, if that was a missed opportunity or not, then how do we make those opportunities? And, you know, I'm the messages and feedback that we're getting, and you know, the people who have been leading out and creating spaces for co-papa driven conversations have been already doing that work. Um, we can continue to create highlight points where we can throw it back onto everybody's conscience um, in a really strong way, whether it's the Green Party doing it, whether it's um, yourselves and active, active um, mobilising in your own communities, marae, workplaces, friends and whānau, um, and that's already happening. Uh, we need to be having these conversations at all different levels, and you know, I just want to add another sort of, and be conscious of, be conscious of the platform. So I'll be really upfront with you all tonight um, about, you know, who I choose to give my time and energy to is really important with all the work we do, but especially with Hoki Whenua Mai. And I won't afford my energy um, to a racist platform, a platform that I know is simply wanting to rip, whip up racism, um, that is actually not going to progress our kōpapa at all. And in actual fact, what they do is they exploit us for their content purposes, for their narrative. Um, and we always need to be mindful of that. So we need to take space and create our own opportunities, our own narratives at all different levels. We lead out those discussions in the house, in the media, and when we are designing and creating those opportunities. Um, and you know, this is why I'm really pleased with the media that we have had, the articles, we've had a series of highlight articles that have been awesome, actually. So we can do that work without relying on toxic platforms and but actually it's those conversations in our in our homes and communities that's where the change really happens and starts to ignite it's our conversations in our facebook communities our online communities um, but really down to our grassroots conversations our flat roots conversations is also where we can grow a sustainable movement um, because this is years stuff, right? We know these things have never come overnight to us. So we need enduring conversations. Um, over generations, we've been talking about these things. How do we keep that focus and energy out? We've been talking about this for decades. Now the Greens are showing, actually, we can do it. We can actually do it. Here are some ways, and we're getting ideas from all of you already as well. 
Kia ora, thank you. Now, just a shout out to everybody who's putting comments and reflections in the chat. We're loving that. If you've got an actual question, though, it's tricky for us to find it because the, the chat's moving quite fast. Uh, and so please, if you have an actual question you want us to address, put it in the Q&A. We're going to try and get to them. So we've got a solid 20 minutes. We are going to finish on time. So let's roll. What local government changes will be needed to make need to be made to ensure land is returned? This is from Danny in Kirikirirua, who would like to take this one. I would like to start. <laughs> uh, we are very, very excited that this year there are Māori wards, new Māori wards happening across the country. It is very very important that we get good people into those places because they are going to be able to then have direct input into the decisions that are made by councils, how they do their uh, bylaws, how they work with their local ports, which is the bane of one of, 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 one of my iwi in the Taita, in, in Tūranga Nui Akiwa in the Taita uh, it's really, really important that we actually get influence in those spaces, and we and we do that by influencing who's in who is in power in those places. And so, get your good people there. <laughs> this is my first thing: get them, uh, get pe help people do campaigns, but also tell your whānau to vote. We have Māori already have low voting rates in the general election, but we are very, very low. So turn up in droves, get your people in. And, but also our good Pākehā people, we know that this is not going to change just by Māori doing this. We know that when we have people, I'm so proud of the work that Jan does inside our party, but actually has done throughout her life around this kaupapa to have these conversations with other Pākehā inside our own organisations, inside our community groups. Uh, but if we're going to make changes in council, uh, we need to get good counsellors on there, but also, oh my goodness, <laughs> Danny just put in there that Jen is their favourite. I'm not going to take that personally at all. <laughs> Tanya said it's three C. Oh, okay. And, I, and I'm not going to tell Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did not have time. I just thought <laughs> to um, read the first bit, but yeah. And the other thing is turn up at council meetings, make a fuss, turn up at hearings, turn up to make submissions because they get away with a lot because people don't turn up. They don't make a fuss. They don't go to the paper. They just keep rolling on doing whatever they want to do. So that that would be my recommendation for that. I'm gonna keep moving because we probably, I'd rather we got one of us at least respond uh, now, how do we create more sustainable funds for mana whenua to purchase their land? Obviously, want them to not pay, but something that is happening more and more. And this was absolutely something that inspired us because we saw iwi trying to do give a little to buy, to buy land that was coming on sale. So who would like to respond to that one? I'll start with just kind of what's in the policy as a kind of a startup idea and others can add into that. So is for the Crown to provide financial assistance um, and ranging from say a grant that could be used to assist in getting a deposit um, to actually paying the full price um, on it. And so enable land to be purchased at whānau and hapu level and um, which, you know, gets around that problem of large natural groupings that people are forced into that actually doesn't make sense um, at an organisation societal level. And, um, and also direct crown acquisition of land. Um, so that could be a new provision in the Public Works Act to allow land to be acquired for the purpose of returning Raupatu land at market rates but precluding sale to an alternative buyer. So put those two things like super tangible, right? The person with all the resource. That's exactly right. I'm going to, um, now, Tiano may not be able to join us at all. 
that <laughs> is what's happening. That's what happens when you live in the rural Manawatu. And the, the Zoom coverage, the Wi-Fi is just not flash. Uh, um, there's a couple of different questions people are asking in terms of Department of Conservation. Now, Celia has mentioned that 5% is too low for sure, but we also have arrangements, say, co-governance of public uh, conservation land. So, you know, what about things like that, where something is in the... Um, in the um, in the mix, and and I'm just looking for. Whereas, and then an alternate view is Danny is at what point do we abolish DOC, the Department of Cons Confiscation? And so this is a concern because, of course, DOC is one of the greatest uh, removers of of land in this country, and there's a lot has happened in our and in this country since the treaty was signed and since even since people have settled in the treaty process the settlement process has continued but who has strong feelings about doc or, or just that idea about the um co-governance maybe to you marama yeah look um this is the other thing about hikikino mai so actually the sharing of power needs to start happening all over the place across all of our crown agencies and particularly with agencies that have land holding absolutely and alongside what you on mind we've already had quite a bit of feedback on this which um primarily is, is a focus on the large majority tract of aotearoa which is in private ownership and it's specifically about addressing that injustice of privately held land and land ownership and justice. But alongside this, we absolutely need to keep working on crown held lands and public service held lands. Um, and so, you know, this needs the, these need to be seen as giving value to each other, whether it's it's all, you know, all land, whether it's public or private or crown held, we've got some specific ways for private held land. But alongside that, we absolutely need to continue a true tiriti led and tiriti governance approach across our public sector, across our Crown agencies, absolutely. This would actually, it's not just about justice, it would actually lead to better outcomes and enduring protection and nurture. And that's what more and more Māori are wanting to step up to and feeling a kaitaki responsibility around that. So, there is a lot that we can do at the local government and, you know, Crown agencies and departments as well, absolutely. Kia ora, thank you, Marama. I just want to say, um, Jay Tuhakaraina, if you still are on the line, I know you've just said goodbye, but I just want to thank you for the comments you've made and want to absolutely um, reiterate that housing is a massive issue that intersects completely into this kaupapa and the work that needs to happen, so kia ora. Um, I wanted to uh, just make it to Valerie Morse, who's got some great ideas requiring the, the Crown to relinquish control over the mandating process to be replaced by a tikanga-led process, allowing for hapu-level mandates, require the Crown to wait until tribunal research reports are finished before entering into negotiations, and perhaps also all the court cases, uh, removing Crown control over post-settlement bodies and structures. Um, kia ora for these suggestions. We're absolutely going to add these into our list. We know we have been approached by many iwi who have uh, really struggled with their PSGEs, their post-settlement governance entities. And, and, and suddenly those bodies have been given mandates by councils, by other organisations instead of the original iwi uh, organisations. So I particularly personally love that. So thank you for those suggestions. I we will we will add that absolutely into the feedback. Could I just also add that I think there's um you know there's a couple of bills that have just been introduced into Parliament that um, the Waitangi Tribunal considered the settlements um, and process and they directly they made a first and strong recommendation to the Crown to stop the process. And, be, and, and to provide resource to the Settlement Trust to do the work 
with all of the parties to um, to find a way forward because they found that the settlement uh, did not have a mandate, the trust did not have the mandate to settle with the Crown and that the ratification process was like 20% off the Crown's guide of what was acceptable below it in terms of the numbers of people supporting it and that um, it undermined um, established land and forestry interests. Like this is really major stuff. And after that, and there's a case in front of the courts, the Crown has introduced bills just completely ignoring the Waitangi Tribunal and can only um, really assume that it's because they are um, trying to reduce costs to the Crown. And when we asked the Minister about that in the House yesterday, um, he gave us an answer about, you know, we have to take all interests into account, which yeah. was, um, yeah, it, like it's to have a very clear ruling from the Waitangi Tribunal. So in November, and the Crown to introduce legislation in February um, is deeply worrying to me as a precedent. And I wanted to quickly acknowledge your work, Jen, in, in great additions, um, Valerie, of course, um, to our thinking, because over the terms, and with Jen as our senator Tiriti, we, we have actually sat in the um, Treaty Settlements Minister's office, I think last term as an example, and said, will there be more of a push towards a tangata, uh, sorry, a tikanga-led process than what we're currently seeing? The first little bit of inkling that we've seen of that has been forced through the Ngāpuhi process that is happening, my iwi, um, because um, hapu are saying, no, we won't have it, it's just not on. And I just wanted to acknowledge that specific point that um, something that, that Jan has advocated for, for for many years and we've got to keep going, absolutely. And just to be really clear, that's, like when I'm raising that concern, that it is not a criticism of the settlement trust, mm. because as the Waitangi Tribunal says, actually the scrutiny and the decision about whether ratification sits solely with the Crown. Um, it does, you know, that there needs to be voting, but the Crown has the responsibility for deciding whether that meets the threshold and they have that responsibility and they haven't. Um, kept their own guidelines. And I'm just going to write in the details. Gilda, uh, now we have eight minutes left and 19 questions. So we're going to quick fire this, people. Uh, James, lovely to see you on here. And Liam have both asked about did we engage with Te Pāti Māori? Quick answer. No, we developed this through our own work and thinking. However, they have gone online to say that this does align with, of course, how they see the world. And uh, I think that there is absolutely many opportunities for us. Uh, we are their closest allies in Parliament and uh, they're pretty awesome. I mean, you can't deny it. Uh, the Some people have put in suggestions, kia ora Barbara, uh, about ahu whenua uh, land. Then we're going to absolutely consolidate that and add that into our feedback. Let's see, how do we, the public, and especially Rangatahi, help to amplify and support the land back process in honouring Te Tiriti? Kia ora, Ruby, uh, Youth MP. I uh, want to say, find out about what is happening in your area. If you're Māori, find out what's happening at home, whether you live there or not. And use this as a bit of a springboard to just have conversations with the people who are in your world. I'm wondering if Jan and Marama, are you able to see the Q&A? Because you might scroll down and there might be things that you see and think, oh, I'm going to quickly answer that. There, there um, is, but I, this, like the, both the comments in our chat and the Q&A are so awesome. I wish yeah. we could get through all of them. Seriously, all of you are just um, putting up such massive thinking. And something I wanted to pick up on from Aroha Kilda Aroha was, you know, can can the thinking be for allowing Fano, you know, and not even just Hapu? And absolutely, our 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 ideas explicitly talk about Hapu and Fano in particular. We've heard lots of feedback about 
the current claims process, it keeps funds at a high level and it's not getting down to always to where it needs to get to. So we have been quite explicit that this is directed also to allow that hapu and especially Fano leadership, um, direct sort of funding availability and funding avenue at that level. So I just wanted to pick up on that specific point. Just seeing a question from Kahu Banks asking if are there judicial ways we could use to return lands? Mm -hmm. I, the Māori Land Court, which I know is hoha, but they shape precedent. Um, and so I'm interested in other people's views. My sense, like, again, I'm a little bit triggered by um, the introduction of those two bills when there's a challenge in front of the Supreme Court at the moment that the government's looking to um, shut down, which kind of, like, the courts will only go so far as the law enables. And it feels to me like we can use that, but why don't we just go and fix the law? <laughs> um, like that kind of our role in terms of the parliamentary process is fix the law um, so that then we don't have to use these expensive, you know, long drawn out processes. Kilda, Marame, was this one jumped out for you? Yeah, um, oh. oh. While you're thinking, oh, yeah, go on. I just wanted to acknowledge Barbara's comment about Wahine being the nucleus of Hapu. And right now, um, since last Waitangi Day, we have got the Mana Wahine Kopapa inquiry happening at the Waitangi Tribunal, which has highlighted strongly how undermining the rangatiratanga of Wahine Māori for colonisation was actually responsible for a massive tract of land loss because we weren't recognized as having you know land rights and land ownership because they brought their western patriarchal assessment to Aotearoa and they decided that women weren't landowners so that actually is an important part we explicitly talk about that in hoki whenua mai and you know um whanau wahine hapu it's all part of hoki whenua mai so i just wanted to acknowledge that um particular point um, oh, sorry, and I cannot leave this this one in a, without, shame on me, without acknowledging, because it's so obvious to me, but I need to explicitly say the link between our people being houseless and landless, because I'm constantly being told from Māori, we are not homeless, Aotearoa is our home, we don't have a house and we don't have our land, and there's a massive difference. Wow. That's and good. I constantly am being told that. So I highlight and amplify that thinking. And it should be of no surprise that when you have your land taken and, and it leads to generations of our people featuring disproportionately and struggling the most with having a home and kainga and papa kainga. And so this is why a sort of loose language. This is why a government facilitated a crown responsibility approach. The crown who facilitated the land loss have a responsibility to facilitate the land back. And which is also how we undercut further exploitation in a heaped, hyped up housing market right now from this policy being exploited for us having to compete with high, high costs for our whenua and for housing. No, we want to pay fair prices if we're going to pay at all. We want that to be fair prices. And I have had, we've had Parker come back to us and say, we want to re register our land for first right of refusal. Mm. And we want to pay a government price, not a market price. We want to pay a just price, not an exploited price. So, you know, this is all part of our thinking as well. I just wanted to pick up on that. Oh, kia ora everybody. It is one minute to eight. That went really, really fast. I want to assure you that yes, this is recorded. It is also live on Facebook. So if you go to um, our page, you can re-watch this. And I think some of the things people see it here can be uh, quoted and put onto posters and t-shirts. Uh, I just want to quickly, since I have the floor, I want to say to Luana, some things need to be national, but absolutely all the final solutions around whenua must be made in that whenua. It is absolutely never, never okay for Wellington, for Parliament, for government to tell 
our people what to do on the on their our own land and in our own law here so absolutely just want to emphasize that we promise to undertake to go through all of this chat all of these questions we will update our paper with responses to them uh, somebody barbara's asked for regular zooms uh, on uh, keeping us updated we will let you know where we were going we'll release it on our page and then as uh Tema Tawaka gets our social media back on track and, and our things are setting up to everybody. Uh, we will let you know when the next thing is happening and what we're doing. We're not interested in just putting out something uh, to make ourselves look flash. We're here to do real work. We're here to make real change. And we will only get that done when we work with our people on the ground. So thank you so much for coming. I'm seeing all the thank yous and the me to everybody. Uh, I'm already booking hui with people on, online who are here. Uh, thank you so, so very much for coming, for engaging, for your questions and hundreds of comments that have been made. We really, really appreciate it. Uh, we invite you to go. I think Shan put there's a link somewhere and go in to look at this proposal and just write into it. Lovely to see you, Ems. Uh, just write into it and and just make all your comments. Having just done this session, I'm totally going to add an entire section on Doc. So thank you, Catherine, for your reflections and everybody else is, is seriously strong feelings. Kia ora aroha. And so to briefly uh, close, I like to close with this whakatoki. It is my favorite. Uh, Ma pango, ma fero, kaoti ai te mahi. With the red and the black, with your, with all of our energy, with all of our knowledge, with all of our heart, we bring that together. Together, we will finish the work. So, thank you so much for being here tonight. And uh, it's just the beginning. It's not even the beginning. It's part of the journey. We've got a long way to go, but we will never stop moving there. Kia ora Naomi.